Simply stated, Marvin Schachter embodies the history and the beliefs of the ACLU. As we've just seen, he has served the organization in many capacities, often in initiating programs and always motivating people to take part. Across seven decades, yes, seven decades, he has been both oracle and orator. He's a dynamo, responsible for groundbreaking work on the rights of the disabled community, farm workers, the poor, women, the LGBT community, civil rights, and the abolition of the death penalty. As many of you seek to learn more of, about the ACLU locally and nationally, you'll have to resort to Google. As we seek the history and accomplishments of the ACLU, here in Southern California, we have our own human search engine, Marvin Google Schachter. <laughs> He's lived it all, and he knows where the bodies are buried. I'm, I am so proud to present the Bill of Rights Award of the ACLU of Southern California to my colleague and my friend, Marvin Schachter. As I was being born in 1924 in the bedroom of a, a third-story apartment uh, within a uh, baseball-throwing uh, distance from Yankee Stadium, roughly at the same time, the ACLU of Southern California uh, was being born. It's a remarkable story because we are the very first expansion of the ACLU beyond the very limited national presence of the organization, founded in 1920. The ACU is made up of a group of social workers, a minister or two, a group of labor leaders, uh, some active women feminists, suffragists, and so on. Uh, it was a very small organization. It was a committee, really. It had no affiliates anyplace else in the United States. It had no membership, really, beyond the founders of the organization, and incidentally, and there was really only one lawyer involved in that very beginning. Later became a Supreme Court judge, Felix Frankfurt, of, then of Harvard Law School. But the ACLU of Southern California was born because Upton Sinclair, then the most famous lawyer, uh, famous, excuse me, writer in the United States, lived in Pasadena, uh, was asked to speak at a rally of striking uh, longshoremen in San Pedro, uh, went to the rally, spoke, was arrested, jailed overnight, returned to Pasadena after he was bailed out, and with what they call a, a group of Pasadena dowagers, called a meeting in the Empress Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, which founded the ACLU uh, of Southern California, the very first national affiliate, a state affiliate of the ACLU. There was an extraordinarily important beginning because the ACLU was a civil liberties organization, but it was a workers' rights organization. When a young lawyer who established a uh, legal practice in California uh, met ACLU pro bono uh, supporters, lawyers, he decided that civil liberties was part of what he wanted to do. He went out to New York, convinced Roger Baldwin uh, that he was a possible candidate. Roger hired him as the very first lawyer the ACLU ever hired, ever paid for. Roger paid A.L. Weirin, that's Abraham Lincoln Weirin, uh, paid Al $100 a month. It was the beginning of the largest legal firm in the United States, the lawyers of the ACLU. When uh, Al began working on civil liberties issues, there was a massive strike of lettuce pickers. 5,000 workers went out on strike. Al became an active participant in the activities of migratory workers in California and the ACLU of Southern California 
became then a organization of civil liberties, of workers' rights, of the rights of migratory workers, all of those things. After Pearl Harbor, when the after the declaration of war, when the president issued the proclamation ordering the relocation, it's a fancy word uh, were there, but the relocation of every resident of Japanese ancestry on the West Coast, citizen or non-citizen, born in the United States or not. There were those people in the civil liberties movement who said, well, it's wartime, it's a war we support, the ACLU should not participate. The ACLU of Southern California did not hesitate. The ACLU of Southern California, Al Wirren, Fred Okren, the Boprono lawyers who worked for the ACLU, then became what we are still today, an organization protecting, defending vigorously the rights of the immigrants in the United States. And just as you saw in the video that you just observed, just watched, when Martin Luther King organized his first visit to Los Angeles, and the ACLU had traditionally been a supporter of civil rights, but in a sense, a supporter taking second place to the work of the NAACP, the National Urban League. Our job, we felt, was to support their rights to participate in the political process, the rights of civil liberties. But we did not consider ourselves a civil rights organization. The ACLU of Southern California discussed what our role would be in the march down Broadway from the Olympic Boulevard to City Hall that Martin Luther King was raising. Our traditional position would be there with Alan Band saying civil rights are constitutional rights observers. The ACLU of Southern California said, we are a civil liberties organization and we are a civil rights organization. We marched together with Martin Luther King and the movement that he was leading. <laughs> the ACLU's mission has always been the same. We feast the issues here in California. We accept the responsibility of doing more than one thing of doing more than one cause, of working on jobs that need to be done in our communities. That's the reason why, for example, today we increasingly deal with issues of the environment and especially the issues of the economy. The ACLU grew as an organization uh, in the period of the Depression, during the war, the period of the Civil Rights Movement, always looking for the ability and the opportunity to do and be what it is, a civil liberties organization, a civil rights organization, an immigrant rights organization, a working people's organization. That's the character of our ACLU. When I think of the past and the work that I've participated in in the 56 or 57 years that I've been involved with the ACLU of Southern California, I recognize that there should be dozens of people on this platform with me, because the ACLU was the volunteers, was the members, the people who served on the board of directors, the people who participated in marches, the people who participated in picket lines, the people who raised the money. There aren't, many of them aren't here today. I think of George Slav and Ruth Abraham and Eason Monroe and Bob Vogel and Reverend Edgar Edwards and Bishop John Burt Hugh Menace, on and on, people who are not with us. But these are the people who made up the ability of the ACLU to respond to the civil liberties and civil rights and economic rights of the people of our country. One thing I should also emphasize, we, in the 90 years that the ACLU of Southern California has existed, have had only five executive directors. Well, the first one, Clinton, um, Clinton Taft uh, served for 22 years. Eason Monroe, who lost his job as a professor,
because he refused to sign the Livering Loyalty Oaths, served about 22 years as well. Uh, when I was president of the ACLU of Southern California, we hired a new executive director, Ramona Ripston. And in the next period of time, <laughs> in the 1970s and the 1980s and the 1990s and into the first years of this new century, Ramona has given magnificent leadership to the work of the American Civil Liberties Union. There are lessons of the history, because of the history of the ACLU of Southern California. And I think the most important lesson is that there are no final conflicts. There are no permanent victories. There are no permanent defeats. We celebrate our victories. We learn from our defeats. We continue to struggle. We know that the struggle for civil liberties and civil rights is a continuing struggle. That the issues, that the price of justice, the, the price of equality, the price of liberty demands the action, the continual action that we are able to participate in in the ACLU of Southern California. I thank you for the award. My family thanks you for the award. We don't expect to retire. We expect to participate as the years go on. Thank you. Thank you.